Well, this is perhaps one of my favorite stories in the scriptures, uh, one of the events of Jesus' life, uh, one of the ones that I'd like to have been there for, and uh, probably you'll be surprised which one it is. But if we're going chronologically, it also seems like uh, my chronology uh, of my study Bible would have this one in uh, at least one place out of place. But we have uh, Jesus moving from Sychar, where he met the woman at the well. And then we have, according to my uh, study Bible, uh, the healing of the royal man's son, who's over in Capernaum, but Jesus is in fact in Cana of Galilee, about 20 miles away. Now, uh, it appears that he is in Nazareth, according to Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 30. Now, Laz uh, Nazareth is about 10 miles south of Cana of Galilee, and it would seem if he was going from Sychar that he would have stopped in Nazareth first and then in Cana, uh, in a logical northerly travel. But and nevertheless, this is uh, where they have placed it in my chronological Bible. And uh, we find Jesus at Nazareth where he was uh, raised in his hometown, if you will. And uh, he stands up in a synagogue to read and he reads from Isaiah 61 verses 1 and 2, and it talks about the Spirit being upon him to free the captives. And of course, we know that he did that. He took us who were captive to sin and freed us from that and said, today this has been done in your sight. So uh, they are very upset that he is claiming to be someone anointed of God, the Messiah, who's uh, setting captives free. And uh, he, he talks about the fact that uh, a person is not received in his hometown. I would say to you that uh, that's one of the reasons that people have the hardest time witnessing to their families. Uh, their families don't take them as seriously as they would somebody that was not of the family. And uh, so we find the hardest people to witness to very often are your own family. Uh, they find it easier to reject what you have to say than they would some stranger. Nevertheless, Jesus says, uh, and I also want you to know that uh, you, you're saying, physician, heal yourself, and what you've done in Capernaum and other places, why aren't you doing it here? And Jesus uh, makes it very clear, two very important points. Uh, and he uses Elijah, uh, and uh, he uses uh, 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 instances where uh, people could have been cured in other places uh, and weren't. Uh, God selected certain people to be healed. And uh, I think it's very important for us to remember that Jesus' ministry was not a healing ministry. When Jesus left this earth, there were lots of people that were still blind, lame, and uh, demon-possessed, and uh, had all of the infirmities uh, before Jesus came on earth. He was not here to heal everyone. Uh, he was here to save everyone from their sins and to pay for that sin on the cross of Calvary. I think it's very, very important that we recognize his priority was to free the captives from sin, not to heal the sick and infirmed. Nevertheless, they were furious that uh, this man who seemed to be claiming that he was the Messiah and anointed uh, wouldn't heal in his own hometown and that he was kind of claiming to be God or at least the Messiah. And so they wanted to take him and it, it says they took him out uh, filled with rage. I think the wording is very important here. And they had a desire to throw him off a cliff. Now, if you have a mob and you have one man uh, who they want to throw off the cliff, uh, you'd think that they'd be very successful. However, the scripture says that he went his way. <laughs> well, I, I kind of pictured this in my mind that they had a hold of him. They were dragging him towards the cliff and all of a sudden God said, freeze, stop. And they were just paralyzed uh, to do anything. And Jesus just walked amongst their midst and walked away to the next town. <laughs> you see, God is on his throne and he controls all events. And I don't know how he took Jesus out of a mob that were bent, determined, and filled with rage to throw him off the cliff and then just walk away. But I do know that God can do that. 
and I do know that God did that and so if I find one of those ones that I'd like to have been there and then see the looks on the face of the mob after he had walked away and say, what happened to him? Where did he go? How did he possibly get away from us? Why isn't he at the bottom of this cliff? God's on his throne, my friends. No matter what your circumstances and situation, he can get you out of them. He can deliver you. But most of all, he can release you from the captivity of sin and give you eternal life because he paid for that price on the cross of Calvary. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.